and can you, by no gift of circumstance, get from him why he puts on this confusion, grading so harshly all his days of quiet, with turbulent and dangerous lunacy? He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he'll by no means speak. Nor do we find them forward to be sounded, for the crafty madness keeps aloof when we would bring him on to some confession of his true state. Did he receive you well? Most like a gentleman. But with much forcing of his disposition. <clears throat> I have a question, but of all demands, plus fee in his reply. Did you assay him to any past time? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we were brought on the way of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear them. They are about the court, and, as I think, they have already ordered this knight to play before him. Tis most true, and he beseeched me to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. With all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose on to these delights. We shall, my lord. Sweet Gertrude, leave us too, for we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear affront Ophelia, her father and myself, lawful aspeals, will so bestow ourselves that, seeing, unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge, and gather by him, as he is behaved, if to be the affliction of his love, or no, that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you, and for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wanted ways again. To both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. Gracious, so please you, we will bestow ourselves. Read on this book that show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. We're off to blame and there's too much proved that with devo devotion's visage and pious action, we do sugar o'er the devil himself. Oh, tis too true. How smart a lash that speech doth give my conscience. The harlot's cheek, beauty Har with fostering art, is not more ugly to the thing that helps it than is my deed to my most painted word. Oh, heavy burthen. I hear them coming. Withdraw. Or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life for who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, 
the insolence of office and the spurns, the patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to glunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those wills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you. The fair Ophelia, nymph in thy orisons, be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My honored lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again, for to the noble mind rich gives wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Ha! Ha! Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? That you be honest and fair. Your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly, for the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bod than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. This was sometime a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. I did love you once. In indeed, my lord, you, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me, for virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish, relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my back than I had thoughts to put them in imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? Your errant names, all of us. Believe none of us, go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heavens. <laughs> if thou dost, Mary, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery. Go, farewell, or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery, go, and quickly too. Farewell. Oh, heavenly powers, restore him. 
I have heard of your paintings too. Well enough. God has given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, you amble, and you lisp, and nickname God's creatures, and make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to. I'll no more on it. It hath made me mad. I say, we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one, shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery, go! Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown! The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword. The expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers quite, quite down, and I of ladies most dejected and wretched, that sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of blown youth, blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me, to have seen what I have seen, see what I see. <laughs> Love, his affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul, o'er which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch, and the disclose will be some danger. Which, for to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England. Raja Claudius. Semua laut lan negeri, perantauan dengan aneka warna, pemandangannya, akan mengalu apa yang terpanjang dalam diwanya. Dan mengabutkan otaknya itu, Hingga ia asing bagi dirinja sendiri, bagaimana pendapatmu? Tuan Polonius, ada baiknya, tapi hamba masih perjaja bahwa asal mula penjakitnya itu. Ialah asmara yang gagal, Ophelia, tak usahlah. Kau tuturkan Ujapan Pangeran Hamlet. Kami sudah dengar semua. Tuanku sesuka hatilah, tapi sesudah permainan hendaknya Tuan Putri, ibunya. Seorang diri menganjurkan kepadanya agar dengan terus terang membuka hatinya dan izinkan hamba Diam-diam mendengarkan perjakapan mereka. Jika tak berhasil, kirimlah dia ke Britania atau masukan tutupan terserah kebijaksanaan tuanku. Raja Claudius, baiklah orang gila. Kalau ia orang besar, tak boleh tidak terjaga.